Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Well, um, we warned you in advance. <laughs> this is going to be a kind of academic episode, although I, I hope that we'll bring up some questions that maybe you'll explore on your own. Um, and this is going to be about the First Amendment. And and actually, Larry looks anxious to ask me what we're drinking. So, <laughs> so what are you drinking, though, Michael? Uh, we are drinking Willet mm. Pot Still Reserve. Um, I I would say that I love it because it's got a bottle that's shaped like a copper pot still, which mm. is awesome in and of itself. But it's uh, it's excellent, excellent bourbon. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I'm not gonna lie; it's definitely a, a go-to. When you can get it, it's hard to get where we live. So. Yeah. Thank you, state-run alcohol port. Yep. Oh, well. Um, but then we go to an estate that uh, has a free market in alcohol, and the shelves are littered with the stuff. Literally littered with them. And all size bottles, too. They had huge bottles of that stuff when we were in Texas. Yeah. It was amazing. Should have bought one of those just for just the bragging half. rights. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah. That's what, uh, that's what Scott told us last week. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Week and a half ago. Whenever it was. Anyway, um, on to the, uh, the First Amendment. And, of course, all the amendments were added after the fact. And it was just supposed to be, like, there was a, they weren't going to be included originally. Uh, well, they weren't included originally, were they? That was something that, oh, no, I'm thinking I mean, of the Bill of Rights was added later. Yeah, that's that's this, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, it, it was added later because they couldn't get anybody to agree to it without it. Yeah. Um, so, and the the idea of leaving them out was that it was supposed to be assumed. Yeah. Like, this is obvious, self-evident <laughs> rights. <laughs> but that, it became pretty clear after a while that, that it wasn't as clear as it was yeah, it's meant to be. Yeah, it's become more and more clear over the last 240-odd years. We need this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so, thank goodness, there were guys standing there saying, wait, we want extra assurances that these rights will exist. Absolutely. Um, that these rights will be protected. Protected. So I'm glad that they wrote them down. And, you know, we, we look at the Bill of Rights and people think, that, you know, it's 10 rights that are codified. But that's that's not really true. There's far more than 10 rights. Yeah. And, in fact, um, the First Amendment actually has five different rights codified in it. <laughs> um, you know, it, it secures five different rights. And uh, can you name them? Not offhand. No? Nah? All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, and I'm kind of ashamed to say that. Yeah. But... Well, and they're all kind of related to each other. I mean, it's all about what, mostly what's in your head, I suppose, yeah. and what you can put out there to the public, yeah. um, or to the government, for that matter. So the, the five rights are um, the freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, uh, freedom of assembly, or, you know, right to peaceably assemble, and uh, the right to redress the government with grievances. Oh, right? okay. So that's the five of them. Um, the, uh, and in fact, we may as well read the amendment in total, um, because the wording is kind of important. It's, this is a contract after all. <laughs> right. Uh, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So, um, essentially they were trying to avoid... A Church of England type situation yeah. here, um, and uh, they were trying to protect people's rights to uh, protest, essentially, yeah. um, to speak out against their government and to publish materials against their government if they saw fit as well. Um, there's some misunderstanding about what freedom of the press is today. Uh, but we'll we'll get back around to that. Uh, there's a question that I've been I've been kind of struggling with um, recently and. So to start it off, though, we'll just say, do you think there should be any limitations on freedom of speech? Yeah. Well, I mean, shouting fire in a crowded theater would be definitely an area that I would have a question about. Okay. Because... What if no one's hurt? Well, then and if no one's hurt, then that's, I would have, you know, no harm, no foul. Yeah. So it's not really shouting fire in a crowded theater. It's... Yeah. It's, well, it's it's the injuries that come from you doing that. So, like, yeah. I mean, if you have people stampeding and children getting hurt, I mean, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, actually, the it's it's funny where that comes from, um, and knowing where that comes from may make you rethink it a little bit. Okay. So uh, the the comment about shouting fire in a crowded theater uh, came from the majority opinion um, written by uh, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes in a case. I want to say it was World War II. Might have been World War One, but yeah. um, I want to say it was World War Two. It was uh, Shank, Shank, Shank. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. Uh, versus the U.S. and the the reason that the the court case was about um, this man Shank who had been distributing pamphlets uh, urging people not to sign up for the draft. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, and he was arrested under the Espionage Act, I want to say, which they keep using really? today. Yeah. Um, and the uh, what they were drawing attention to is that they were trying to create um, an uh, uh, what do you call it? A metaphor or an analogy, excuse me, uh, an analogy of shouting fire in a crowded theater, yeah. that it was a threat to people. And in this case, they were trying to draw the the line that this was a threat to the government to have this man during time of war, yeah. urging people not, not to go sacrifice their lives for the United <laughs> for States. For the war. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, that that was hmm. somehow similar. Well, he was saying that uh, obviously there are limitations on freedom of speech, yeah. Um, such as, you know, you wouldn't want somebody yelling fire in a crowded theater is essentially how it was, yeah. it was written. So that was, uh, given as an excuse well, to hold this man liable. That specific instance of someone actually yelling fire in a crowded theater. I mean, I don't, I have a problem with you doing that. Like as I don't know. I mean, I have a problem with that, but at the same time, I have a problem with the government telling you. What you, I mean, obviously the government can't tell you what you can and can't say. Yeah. So, I, I mean, mean, it's 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 just an icky question. Yeah. Well, and from my perspective, the urging people to not sign up for the draft is kind of the same as fine. being an abolitionist. Well, yeah, and I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, if I mean, I feel like you absolutely would have the right to do that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't. You really can't. Com- to me, you can't compare the two. They're completely opposite. Well, they things. were saying that it was the same as as. Uh, it was a threat to people in the same way. In the same way. Which is actually the opposite because you're encouraging people to not go kill themselves in a war. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or kill others. <laughs> or others for that matter, yeah. like Yeah. So, um, so it's, it's that the uh, shouting fire in a crowded theater is not something that's codified. It's not like yeah. it was actually written into law or that it was a precedent. It's that um, it was used as an example of what kind of reasonable limitations you might place on the freedom of speech. Yeah. But I would suggest that it's not the speech that's actually the problem. It's the you know creation of a of a situation that's going to cause harm. Yeah. Um, and that that's what's actually well, prosecutable. And, and, and I would agree with that because I mean when you look at it in those 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 terms, I think that's. I mean, I, I can I can agree with that. Yeah. So um, then the, the question that I've actually been kind of struggling with is, should a call to violence be prosecutable? I would say no to that, okay. personally, um, only because it's, it's up to the individual who actually does the violence. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the person you should hold responsible. I mean, you should be able to say anything you want to. I mean, I don't. I just don't see why you shouldn't. Like I say, I mean, because I mean, you're allowed to believe what you want to believe, and I mean, if violence is part of it, it just is. Yeah. It's um, the the act of violence is what should be prosecuted, not the calling for it. In my opinion. Yeah. Um. And I I would agree to, for the most part, and I'm trying to find if there is a limit to that. And yeah. of course, most people would disagree with us. Yeah. Well, um, I, yeah, I, and I figure that. But um, so uh, let me take a really extreme example, and okay. um, and I can remember his name this week, uh, mostly because I wrote it down to make sure. Although yeah. truthfully, I don't think I would have had to have written it down. It was just in that one moment that I could not come up with it a couple of episodes ago at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, but uh, we'll take Anwar Al Awlaki yeah. uh, as an example now. Anwar al awlaki was a uh, an American citizen um, and a Muslim cleric who uh, had done like quite a few just like very academic lectures about um, about the Quran and about Islam and and so forth and uh, and even after the nine eleven attacks he was um, he was he was lecturing at a um, 
a big mosque in Virginia, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Somewhere but, here in the States. Yes, somewhere here in the States. And after 9-11, he, um, he had had uh, some connections with some of the attackers that they had attended his mosque. Now, yeah. uh, the you know, they've tried to draw that connection as meaning that he was involved in it. Like yeah. it's like holding it's... your priest responsible when, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like in uh, Boondock Saints, those guys is their priest responsible for them going around and doing? I, I don't think yeah. so. Um, but anyway, he uh, he after the attacks, he condemned the attacks, yeah. um, and he was you know uh, like opposed to violence. It seems at that time. Yeah. Uh, but he became increasingly radicalized as we got more and more involved in the Middle East. Imagine and, that. Yeah, uh, he was Yemeni, uh, like of Yemeni descent. Yeah. Um, by the way, and it's, God, can you imagine if he was around now? But yeah. anyway, um, eventually he moved over. He started giving more radicalized lectures and and calling for resistance against the U.S. forces in the Middle East. Yeah. And uh, and you know, as far as I can. I can say, I mean, I don't know exactly if he ever used these words, but uh, he was calling for jihad against the um, Americans in the Middle East, against the American military in the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, and he moved over to the Middle East, and um, he continued to, to preach out there. And he was he posted a bunch of YouTube videos and so on and so forth. He was very influential. I mean, he probably yeah. he drew became a lot a big, of people. He became a big figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He probably drew a lot of people into the, the cause of the Muslims in the Middle East fighting off the... Uh, off the Americans. Yeah. Now, I think you could also make the argument that he was calling for people to defend their culture, their and homeland. Their, yeah, and their homeland. But either way, he was very clearly calling for violence. Yeah. Um, and although I can't tell that he was ever actually involved in any violence, he was yeah. calling for violence. Is that acceptable? Can he be prosecuted under the the law for that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think probably he could. I'm um, sure he could be. Well. I, I, mean, I think I, would I think that that's be. probably reasonable to prosecute him under the law. I, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I don't think that I would see a, a particular problem with it. Um, I I do have a particular problem in how they actually dealt with this problem. Yeah. Because um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is he the one that was droned? Yes. Uh, yeah. He was uh, bombed in his home in Yemen. Um, I can't remember when. Early 2010, 2011. I was going to say, this, this, it was definitely there. under the Obama administration. Yeah. Because it was a... I remember when it happened and it was a big deal. I couldn't remember if it was specifically him or not. But I remember... Because he was a U.S. citizen, correct? Yes, he was. Um, and there was there was a lot of... A lot of people had a problem with that because he was. He was a U.S. citizen that was drone bombed <laughs> in another country. Yeah, um, and we will probably talk about his story again whenever we talk about the Fifth and Sixth Amendments. Yeah. Um, he uh, Essentially, you have the leader of the United States signing an assassination order of an American citizen yeah. um, without due process, yeah. uh, which there's definitely... A, a problem with yeah. now if they had you know tried to raid his house and with special forces and he was gunned down shooting back or whatever okay, okay yeah you know. i get that yeah. i can i can um I but can stand with that dropping but. a bomb on him yeah uh, at home is something different and he did the yeah. same thing to his son a couple of weeks later actually his like oh, wow. 16 year old son was also uh yeah. bombed from a unmanned drone yeah. um and killed um but anyway that's a little a little bit off track. Uh, yeah. But the point is, you know, okay, so this guy was very clearly calling for violence uh, against people. Yeah. Um, I think that it's probably, I mean, I, you know, I think that it's probably fair to prosecute him, to bring him to court, to try him for this. I, well, I think for treason, because, I mean, would, well, would that's that, the would more that fall, reasonable, I, I think. I mean, that seems like a reasonable offense. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, not so much the, the First Amendment. But I that, know. I mean, I don't know though. I mean, you're still saying what you, still speaking what you believe. I don't know. It's sticky. Well, it gets weird when you start thinking about that. All of our founding fathers to help write this document were treasonous. We're, we're, we're yeah, exactly. Every single one of them <clears throat> committed treason against the British crown yep. in order to. To form this United States in the first place. Exactly. So, um, I, I think that their intent was to make absolutely sure that people could speak out in against the government in whatever way they chose. Yeah. Um, hard to say, though. 
and I, the but you, if you start bringing it down a little bit, the question becomes it, like it becomes a matter of degree. So you say, okay, this guy was clearly calling for violence. Um, if he's prosecutable for this, we'll say yes. Yeah. Well, all right. So how about um, the uh, uh, a guy, a divorced man who, with his new girlfriend, is talking about how terrible his ex wife was and uh, how somebody should kill her, and okay. and so on. And she goes out and does it. Yeah. All right. So his new girlfriend goes out and kills his ex-wife because he kept saying how terrible she was and how somebody should kill her. Yeah. Now, is he responsible for Who's that? Who's responsible for that? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, can you prosecute him for that? I mean, yeah. the question is, did he really mean that anyway? Yeah. And and then you get into context. I mean, mm-hmm. was he just blowing off steam? or yeah. Or was he actually like... Trying to convince her to go do it. Mm-hmm. And even if he was trying to convince her to go do it. She's the idiot that went and did it. She did it. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, I mean, she's the idiot that listened to him at that point. And so then, so if you do hold people responsible for violence committed as a result of the things that they say. Yeah. Um, where does the media fall in this? Yeah. I mean, think about like some of the big ones that we would talk about. Uh, how about the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq yeah. that the media pushed and pushed and pushed, oh, and now man. like millions of people have died. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Should they be held responsible for that lie? Yeah. For, for and, that and if that's the case, propaganda. I mean, you're talking about locking up a lot of folks because okay. it's not <laughs> well, and not just like the commentators, but mm-hmm. the the people behind the scenes i mean how far do you want to go yeah and i urge people to read up on on that because uh and i I can't think of a a really good example of an article to go read right now like off the top of my head but there's plenty of them out there there's quite a bit of evidence that um the u.s government that the the top officials in the u.s government that were going and you know speaking in front of the u.n and in front of the press and you know were absolutely knew better yeah. They knew that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, yeah. and they were just lying to us as an excuse to go to war. Well, from what I understand, I mean, we knew they had them at one point. Right. We also we, knew that they had been destroyed. Because we gave them to them. <laughs> but the, that's my understanding, though, is we knew they had them because we gave them to them. But at the same time, we had went back in over the years and had pretty well accounted for all of them being destroyed. We had yeah. their, um, we had a defector that had been up in the regime there, yeah, higher level in the regime, and he had talked about their existence and their destruction, um, and there was no reason to not believe him. Yeah, and so. well, yeah, and most and of it had the, been accounted for as it was and so well, and yeah. at the end of the day in retrospect you can go back now i mean we never found those weapons mm-hmm. so i mean we did the war and did the whole thing yeah and they never showed up i, I would contend that they never expected to yeah that they knew that they weren't there yeah it's just an excuse um and, and i would say that we've been lied into really every war that we have been involved in yeah. uh, certainly since World War Two, yeah. um, I was gonna say World War Two is the one that you can kind of make a case for. I mean, I mean they definitely bombed Pearl yeah, Harbor. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> did. But there's evidence there that we knew that that was coming too. Well, and, um, and, and they, that we were trying to trigger a, an attack. Um, yeah. And I was listening to an interview just yesterday, I think, about this um, at Scott Horton's site, actually, yeah. at scotthorton.org. Um, I can't remember who the interview was with, but. At any rate, they were talking about some like all of these lies that had gotten us into war over the years, and they were discussing um, that there had there was some evidence that we knew that the attack was coming, and that we had laid out a plan to try and trigger an attack from Japan because then we would be the defending party and have an excuse to enter the war yeah. against Japan, so that we could then enter the war against Germany. Yeah. All right. So, but leaving all that aside, that's a whole, that's a whole... Man, that's, talk about <laughs> yeah. rabbit holes. Yeah, um, you're supposed to keep me on track here, not lead me down. <laughs> yeah, right. I have a tendency to do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, at any rate, um, going back to, is the press responsible then for, uh, for the propaganda or the lies that have led to that kind of violence? Yeah. And, um... You know, or take even a more recent example. The we just got the Mueller report. 
Oh, well, yeah. we haven't gotten the report yet. I it's been it's know, been but, turned over to the Justice Department. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've you know we've gotten summaries, etc. And uh, the they have determined that there was no Russian collusion. But there's an awful lot of media companies that have spent the better part of the last three two years. years? Two, is it three years? It's two years close. for sure. I mean, the the uh, investigation was almost two years, but yeah. they've been talking about it for oh yeah longer than been... that. Anyway. Um, and are, are they then responsible for this set of lies? And and then a better question probably is if there had been Russian interference in the election. Yeah. And there seems to have been like a little bit. I don't know if you'd actually call it interference. See, I don't know if it reaches not, the level of interference. It's not what we would consider interference. I mean, to me, nothing short of them like changing, tapping, votes. changing yeah. votes and tapping into to voting systems mm-hmm. is interference. Yeah. I mean, they can say whatever they want to. They can buy all the Facebook ads they want to. Yeah, and that's that's exactly right uh, from my perspective as well. Is that the the freedom of speech atten- extends to people outside this country? Freedom of yeah. speech, like these, are supposed to be natural rights. These pre-exist the Constitution or the government or whatever. They don't only apply to U.S. citizens. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so anybody can come in here and say whatever it is that they want to say. Yeah. And if you're influenced by it, well, maybe that's your fault. You should have gotten a better public school education. <laughs> or something. Yeah. I probably should have avoided a public school education and gotten a better education. Anyway, um, so even if the, the Russians, and they almost certainly were because everybody does, I mean, the whole point well, of a campaign is to influence votes. And, and right? we're, and by the way, the U.S. is the kings of this. Yeah, like we sure. do so much of this stuff, and we've done it in Russia. I mean, that's part of the reason they're so hell bent on interfering in ours is because we do so much in theirs. We're a big part of what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, the uh, and in fact, there was that leak, probably leaked by Russians, but it certainly has never been denied as being a true conversation yeah. of. Uh, um, uh, Newland, uh, Victoria. Oh, that. Yeah, Victoria Kagan Newland. I urge you to look this up on YouTube. Um, it should be easy to find. There's some language, but anyway, there's a, a recording of a conversation between the State Department employee Victoria Kagan Newland and um, the ambassador. I want to say anyway, some diplomat over there. Uh, talking about who we, the United States government, was going to pl- place in the position of president of the Ukraine. Um, <laughs> right. And this was, uh, you know, this was after our second coup over there. Yeah. Um, again, don't have time to get into all that, but we've been deeply involved in splitting the Ukraine off from the yeah. Russian Federation. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like I said, not to go down another rabbit hole, but we've talked about Venezuela on the podcast before. And it's like that's exactly what we're doing in Venezuela right now. I mean, it's no yeah, question yeah, about it. Yeah, like, I absolutely. mean, so um, so we've we've wandered a lot. Yeah, unfortunately, like we're well into this, and I haven't hit anywhere close to <laughs> the the topics that I wanted to. Um, but uh, another one that this is actually probably more uh, scarier, a little bit more frightening. Um, more insidious in a lot of ways, is that uh, were you aware that in February the Senate passed a, a bill resolution? There's a big difference. It was S.1, so it must have been a bill, right? Because it would be SR if it was a resolution. I think so. All right. Anyway. I'm positive that. Um, it, was the, uh, it was a Mideast policy uh, statement, though, anyway. Yeah. And included in it was language urging the states to stop um, any contracts to to uh, not renew any contracts with any company that was participating in the uh, Israel BDS movement. Really? You know about the BDS movement? No, I don't. Know. Okay, well, it's it's actually been kind of longstanding at this point, and um, it's like, I mean, you couldn't get more free speech than this, as far as I'm concerned, or at least free association. Yeah. Um, the BDS movement is boycott, divest, and sanction, um, and it's a, a movement to try and who are they um, using it against? Israel. Oh. Uh, the state of Israel to try and put pressure on them to improve the the state, the, the relation with the Palestinians that live ah, in Israel, right? Gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha. Um, 
I mean, I hope everybody out there knows that the Israel-Palestine conflict has been going on a long time. And essentially, uh, what happened was that the, the West, after World War II, created the state of Israel, um, and they claimed a bunch of territory, and then they fought to claim more. So in, in, they had a, a number of wars where they expanded <laughs> their territory. And they're, it, it's actually, they have violated... Uh, the UN Charter. Um, so they should not uh, keep that territory, and they're not supposed to settle that territory, but they have. It's Gaza, the West Bank, um, all these areas. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I wasn't aware of this until recently, but um, according to the UN Charter, you can't just like go start go start a war and then go take over another area. Yeah, like, it's that, supposed it's, to, it's, it, to discourage, prevent. yeah. Yeah, stuff mm-hmm. like what's happened in the past with Germany mm-hmm. and stuff where a, a dictator decides, I'm going to start taking over a bunch of land. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, uh, this is one of the, here, here's one of the things recently that I'm really disappointed in Trump about is the statement that the U.S. would recognize Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Golan Heights is another one of these territories that they they took from Syria mm-hmm. in, the, in the war in 67... I want to say, um, and uh, and have never given back. It's disputed territory, and yeah. the again, it's it's occupied illegally yeah. um, according to the UN Charter. But we say it's okay now. All yeah. of a sudden, that yeah. you know that because, they don't have to ever give it back to Syria. Yeah. Um, so, at any rate, uh, the the Palestinians um, are second class citizens within Israel. Yeah. Um, and in fact, Netanyahu recently said uh, that Israel is not a state um, for everybody, yeah. uh, that it is a Jewish state and that it is not a state for everybody. Very, I would say very clearly saying that the Palestinians are yeah. not welcome and not really citizens of the, the state of Israel, even though they live there yeah. and have their entire lives because yeah. it was their land. Their natural born. Yeah. yeah. It's not like that they, they moved in. Yeah. They that's where they're from. Yeah. Um, so, and it's, the Palestinians include all the Arabs in Israel. Yeah. Uh, Christian and Muslim. They're uh, all the Arabs Because they Israel. have both, yeah. But anyway, so the boycott, divest, and sanction movement is the, um, is uh, companies and people trying to not do business with Israeli companies yeah. or uh, companies connected to the, is- is- uh, the state of Israel yeah. in order to put pressure, economic pressure on them to, um, to, Try and tr- you know try and get them to uh, recognize more Palestinian rights, etc. Yeah. All right. So um, they pass language urging um, these uh, the states to not do business, to not continue any contracts with any companies that were participating in this movement. Yeah. That they were saying essentially that the the states and actually I've heard you know lots of stories. You can look this up on online too. There's plenty of stories out there where um, various uh, public Employment is requiring people to sign um, sign a statement saying that they won't participate in BDS and so forth, and really? um, in order to continue working, oh, wow. uh, you know, in things like public school teacher oh, wow. uh, stuff like this. So um, it, it's it's insane because essentially what the state is saying is that you cannot choose to. N- All right, get this right. right. You cannot choose to not do business. Yeah. With particular companies that are connected to the state of Israel. Really? Yeah. Wow. That if you choose to not do business with somebody, yeah. that that is somehow illegal. That's crazy. Right. Wow. So, um, you know, talk about a, to abridge the freedom of speech and freedom of association that's also kind of covered in this whole thing. Yeah. Um, so then the, the question of, Freedom of speech. How does that apply to whistleblowers? Yeah. Right. So that's the that's the next big question. Then yeah. I would say, um, because certainly there's been a bunch of whistleblowers that have been prosecuted under, yeah. for example, the Espionage Act. Yeah. Um, for releasing information that I would say the public is entitled to. Yeah. And my my position on that is, you know, if if you have access to the information, it's 
you know, and you feel if you have access to that information and you feel like it needs to be released, you should be able to release it. I mean, that, that's just, I mean, that, like I said, that, that's just kind of my position on it, but I don't, I don't like the deal with Snowden. Like, I mean, we needed to know that. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that was, I mean, I know if I was in that position, I would have done the same thing. There's no question about it. Yeah. So the reason I never would have been in that position because <laughs> never would have gotten the clearance. Yeah, I never would have yeah. got the clearance for that. And so, uh, you know, Snowden is in exile yeah. now for uh, telling us that the NSA was spying on us. Yeah. Uh, well, and the that, American public, and that they were lying about it. Because, yeah. After Clapper sat yeah, there, Clapper in front sat of there, and, and said, we are we are no, not doing this. Yeah. And yeah. Which I mean, it, and it was crazy because I mean, we all kind—I of, always kind of knew, you know. You know yeah, you I just mean, assume, right? You just kind of assume, but like when it was put out in front of you, like yes, this is absolutely how this is working and how this is being done. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, it's um, Big Brother. And uh, let's see the one we were talking about beforehand, the the Pentagon Papers uh, yeah. released by Ellsberger about the Vietnam War. Oh. Um, the uh, and then the other the other big one recently and this one's really interesting because it's back in the news kind of yeah. um, is uh, formerly Bradley now Chelsea Manning yeah. um, releasing the the Afghan War papers tapes I don't remember what they call them um, logs logs that maybe. seems right sure. Afghan war logs yeah. um, or the I don't know some kind of war logs Iraq war logs Afghan war logs pretty sure it all was the war Af- logs. I thought it was Afghan, but I really don't know. Yeah, I think it had it had several yeah. bits. Um, it was also the uh, um, all the diplomatic stuff. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, he released all this information that I think wasn't even considered classified. It was like sensitive. Yeah. Uh, but he now she it was he at the time, right? Yeah. I, Pretty sure it was he at the time. Okay, so I don't want to you know miss. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so they, they, we'll go with they. Sure. They, <laughs> um, they gave testimony a, a while back. So he was prosecuted for talking. Yeah. And now, interestingly, um, Chelsea Manning now yeah. is back in prison for not talking. <laughs> right. uh, they, um, they called a grand jury uh, they they called her to testify in front of the grand jury about this information that she had already released before in previous testimony, um, because it was a grand jury, it was very secretive. Yeah. Uh, so she refused to testify, yeah. um, because it was secretive, yeah. and they have now thrown her back in federal prison wow. for refusing to testify. And as I understand it, um, and this is a. Uh, another article that I came across on antiwar.com. Um, actually, there's been a couple of them, and they're coming from... I should have written down the girl's name that's that's writing them, or at least the site that she writes for, uh, but I can't remember it now. Oh, well, anyway, you can find it on antiwar.com. It's all, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, under the features or spotlights or what have you. Anyway, uh, the, they're um, keeping her in solitary. Really? Until she agrees to testify again. That's... Now, it's a secretive trial and so the there's concern about if I testify again am I going to get drawn back into this thing is there going to be more prosecution against me in the future that's yeah you know absolutely there's a real question here but the the question that we're trying to address is are whistleblowers entitled to their freedom of speech at what point yeah. is it enough of is it damaging enough um, that the government should be able to prosecute and I would say never because this is all stuff that's being done with public funds. Yeah. Well, and that's that'd be my position. I mean, you know, I mean, it, there's never. I mean, it should all be out in the open anyway. I I'm mean, paying not, somebody to spy on me. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Which I would never do of my own, my own volition. Probably yeah. never do. Yeah. Um. So now uh, Snowden and Manning both um, they uh, they used WikiLeaks. For yeah. um, a lot of the release, so there's another one, Julian Assange, and we can kind of transition to freedom of the press here. Yeah. Um, but it's you know uh, Julian Assange is being held as a Russian agent, or you know, I mean, he's stuck in the yeah. what is it, the Peruvian embassy, I think, one in London embassies, or something. Yeah. Um, Ecuador, Ecuador, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so he can't leave because he'll be arrested by the U.S. if he immediately. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and it's because he released this information on his site, WikiLeaks, and the that it was embarrassing to the U.S. government. Yeah. But this is one of those things that this is protected again. Um, Should be. And by the way, I, so... Freedom of the press has been reinterpreted. I, I did want to get to yeah. this. Um, freedom of the press has been reinterpreted somehow recently, or that the press and the media are like some class of people. Yeah. And I've never, because growing up learning about this stuff, I mean, I was always under the impression that we're the press. And I don't mean as podcasters. I mean like as citizens. Yeah. I mean, as citizens, we're the press. Like, yeah. that was always my interpretation of it. I mean, you don't have to go get a license to be a member of the press. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just... That's absolutely correct. I mean, the... And that's how it was taught when I was coming up. But I don't believe that's how it's being taught anymore. No, I'm, I don't know that it's being taught at all anymore, but... Yeah, it may um, not be. But the, the press is the printing press. Yeah. Essentially, the, they're saying, all right, so the two parts to this being freedom of speech and freedom of the press yeah. means that you can go out there and say whatever it is that you want to say. Yeah. And that the government cannot prevent publication. Of what you've said. Of any of that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. No matter by whom. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, so, if I want to go in my basement and start up my own printing press and start giving out leaflets on the yeah. street, there ain't nobody that can stop me. And and we are we are the press in yeah. this case. I mean, we're yeah. releasing this information. And yeah. now, after talking about this for the last uh, 35 minutes or so, um, we have to be a little bit concerned that we might get a drone bomb. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, w- I would like to talk about fr- freedom of religion, too, but uh, I don't think we have a lot of time. I didn't have anything, like, really current events to talk about. I mean, there was the big case uh, last year, I guess it was, about the um, baking the cake for the gay couple. Oh, yeah. Um, that yeah. people kept talking about as a freedom of religion issue, but it wasn't at all. I mean, yeah. it wasn't... The, the issue wasn't freedom of religion. The issue was... Freedom Whether of somebody, association, right? yeah, it's freedom of association. Yeah. It's uh, am I obligated to sell a product that I have created yeah. to so, anybody? Yeah, exactly. and I would say it's my property. I can dispose of it as I please. Exactly, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Right. And why would you want a cake made by somebody that don't like you anyway? Well, the whole like, point was to bring a case. Well, it was the point was to yeah. bring a case, but in 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 reality, like. If I would much rather know these people, like, so if I'm gay and I'm going to get my cake made, yeah. I'd much rather know that those people don't like gays. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. I'm going to go somewhere else because I <laughs> exactly. don't know what they've done to that cake that I'm going to eat. Like, I'd much rather know that they don't like me and just go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, because, and that's what happens with stuff like this. It, with speech in general, is when when you push it underground and down, that's when it becomes more violent or, or and things of that nature. I mean, it just does by nature. When people don't feel like they have an outlet. When there's no outlet to express. And that's exactly what you do in situations just like the bake the cake thing where you're making me bake a cake for somebody I don't like. You're just inviting malicious intent. Yeah. Um, Might spit in it. Well, yeah. Or worse. <laughs> I mean, you yeah, know. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that one there. Um, so uh, the other point I wanted to make that it is freedom of religion not from religion although yeah. actually it's kind of both yeah um because it says that the state will not establish a religion and the state will not prevent you from exercising your own religion yeah all right so the the whole prayer in schools thing yeah. um i think probably at a public school they they can't um say a christian prayer over the intercom to everybody because that would be Similar to establishing a, a religion. Well, However, they also can't prevent students from getting together yeah. and praying on their own. Well, and, and there's been a lot of hay made about this because especially like the valid Victorian speeches, mm-hmm. um, not allowing the students to say anything of religious and like say a prayer or anything like that in their yeah. speeches. And to me, that's just wrong because that's not that people interpret. They are, in the, they are then preventing the free exercise thereof. Exactly. Exactly my point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, of course, the uh, assembly stuff is really important. This yeah. is the, and 
it's a shame we don't have more time because we got to wrap it up. But yeah. um, this is really important stuff. This is actually the 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 primary point that this all leads to, which is that people are free to assemble and protest the government. Yeah. And um, as long as it's peaceful, yeah. like, uh, but. It also says, of course, in the uh, the Declaration of Independence that when uh, the uh, people feel that the state is became oppressive, yeah, it which is by the destructive way, destructive of their natural rights, that it is the right and the duty of the people to yeah. alter or abolish it. Yeah. So and it's not that they didn't believe in we're violence at some way point. over that threshold. By the way, I, I agree. I feel like we are. I mean, these are I, the kind. Of, this is the kind of commentary that's going to help <laughs> help us achieve my particular goal with this podcast, which is to end up on the SPLC's list of anti-government extremists. Yeah. Wow. But um, the but, uh, but it's true though. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, it, we absolutely have. I mean, you look at all the freedoms we've lost. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just... Yeah, um, there's a uh, a comment by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the guy that wrote the Gulag Archipelago, Okay. Um, that uh, that says... Um, oh, let's, uh, let's see if I can come up with the quote just right. Ah, we're going to end it on the quote. No. Well, I was going to actually... So while I'm trying to think of <laughs> what that quote is, uh, let me do point out as far as this um, protesting uh, yeah. thing that there is already some restriction on that here too. You have to get licenses sometimes to hold protests and so forth. Like licenses in general are unconstitutional. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> and that's a problem. And even like in France, the yellow vest protest, they, yeah. they've established a whole bunch of areas where they're not allowed to protest oh, yeah. and so forth. Of course, you know, and that's you know how that on. goes, right? Like <laughs> you tell me that's not where I'm allowed to protest. That's where I'm bringing my mob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to be shaking some signs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. So the the Solzhenitsyn quote, I think it's appropriate because you're talking about us losing um, losing a bunch of our rights, and yeah. it has gone much quicker since nine eleven, of course. And uh, so that's actually what he comments on is he says a, a state of war only serves as an excuse for domestic tyranny. Yeah. And uh, so I think that that's you know we see it with the um, the Patriot Act and then the Freedom Act. Yeah. And so many other things, domestic spying, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that seems like a perfectly good place to end. Um, a friend of ours suggested that we talk about Brexit sometime soon. We were yeah. actually going to talk about it last week, uh, but we knew that there was no way that anything <laughs> was going to happen actually on the 29th. Yeah. Um, but so now they've got a new date, April 12th, and uh, we'll we'll talk about it before then and explain how it's not going to happen then either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, should be should be interesting to see how that one plays out. The EU's trying to play hardball, but the truth is they don't want the the British oh, to no. leave. They, so they want them in there. I mean, um, the the it, the more people that start dropping out, the worse it is for them. That's yeah, the last thing absolutely. they want. And that's a huge it's, economy for it's them to the lose. Domino theory. Right, right. There you go. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, know your rights. Absolutely. Know your rights. And so uh, you can find us on iTunes, uh, on yep. Facebook at the Liberty Mike, and uh, follow us at either of those places, both of those places, preferably. Absolutely. Um, if Recommend us to your friends. Please. And uh, we, we'd like to get a little bit more circulation. I think we're yeah, yeah, absolutely. reaching get. a level where we're comfortable with other people hearing our stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, my God, we got to interview Scott Horton. I know. Like, right? we, we ought to be big time now, right? So, um, maybe yeah. we are, and we just don't know it. Uh, fingers crossed. Man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, follow us on Facebook, follow us on iTunes, uh, give a review, hopefully positive. Give a negative review if, it, if you feel like it, because, right. you know, we we're, we're ready to yeah. hear some criticism as well. And um, hopefully, you'll follow us again next time. Follow us again next time. Listen. You, yeah, there you go. That's better. Yep. Hopefully you'll listen again next time. All right. And uh, and we'll try and get this right then. All right. So, good night, everybody. Ciao. Later. <laughs>